Thanks for joining us here in Geneva for the AI for Good Global Summit 2018. I'm delighted to be joined by My Ambassador gosh. Amandeep Singhil. Uh, you are India's ambassador to the Conference on Disarmament in mm -hmm. Geneva, but you are also a member of India's task force, National Task Force on Artificial Intelligence, with right. a lot of experience on the topic. Can you take us through the various projects you've been involved with to do with the AI? Right. So I essentially work in the security space. Uh, but I'm an engineer by training, uh, so uh, I'm familiar with bits and bytes and communication protocols uh, and uh, the whole digital space. Uh, so naturally, uh, I was attracted uh, uh, to, to this uh, topic uh, when it started to become more uh, prominent. Uh, and I've been involved with international policy discussions here in Geneva on aspects uh, of autonomy, machine autonomy. Uh, and I've also been, as you mentioned, part of a national reflection on the uh, promotion uh, uh, of uh, AI uh, for India's economic uh, transformation. It's my sec second uh, summit here at the ITU, uh, and I'm enjoying being uh, uh, part of the discussions uh, here. So here we're obviously focusing on the good uses uh, of AI. So AI is a force for good. Right. Uh, what's your perspective when it comes to AI as a way to deliver the UN Sustainable Development Goals? Uh, I think the uh, AI uh, technology suite uh, can play an important role in helping the UN deliver on Agenda 2030, including the Sustainable Development uh, Goals. For me, uh, the most uh, fascinating aspect of AI for good is AI's potential uh, for transforming learning. Uh, so when I say learning, uh, I mean uh, firstly learning about ourselves, then uh, learning about the world, and finally learning about others, especially working and learning uh, with uh, others. So let me explain. Uh, when I say learning about ourselves, when we reflect on machine autonomy or when we uh, interact with machines that are uh, intelligent in some way, uh, we understand more about ourselves as uh, cognitive uh, beings. Uh, then when uh, we uh, talk about understanding the world, learning about the world, let's take the example of uh, a person uh, with a significant disability, a visual impairment. So if we can use AI uh, to give such a person a feel of the world as uh, though uh, just like those without uh, that kind of an impairment then that would be a significant good from uh, my perspective likewise if doctors are able to learn about diagnosis by working with machines by looking at what is uh, done say with respect to uh, uh, um, diabetic retinopathy or uh, uh, early on stage of arthritis or cancer uh, that would again be a, a tremendously good uh, development. Finally, when I say working with others, learning with others, AI is uniquely interdisciplinary in character. Uh, you need to work uh, not just with engineers and coders, but also designers, also those who understand the actual human uh, or societal problem being solved. So it, uh, it reflects in a unique way the social construction of technology. Uh, and uh, it forces you to work across silos, across uh, disciplines. Uh, so that would be uh, transformational, especially in countries uh, uh, where such a culture of working through problems uh, is uh, not there. And that's why it's important to create the right framework, I suppose, for AI to, to blossom and to be used as a tool for development or to deliver good around the world. Uh, what are the limitations and the main challenges of using AI solutions, according to you, especially in terms of you know fixing the world's problems? Right. I think one of the uh, challenges is that uh, we don't want to exclude people from this problem solving, or we don't want to have dichotomies of problem owners and solution providers. So AI should be used in a manner that maximizes its uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, nature uh, so that no one feels excluded. And we don't have, uh, there are already inequities in the world. Uh, we don't aggravate uh, them in many any manner. Now, the other aspect of learning about the world, when we look at the world as humans, we have our biases, 
Uh, we have our prejudices. So we don't want AI to amplify those biases. We want uh, our personal data to be protected, our uh, uh, privacy to be respected, uh, our dignity as human beings to be, uh, to be uh, affirmed. So that's the challenge about uh, working with AI on learning about uh, the world. And finally, when we talk about learning about ourselves, I think a very, very important uh, uh, issue is uh, human agency. Uh, we have a tendency already to hand over more and more responsibility to technology. Uh, we need to guard against that. Uh, we uh, have already uh, seen the consequences of increasing distraction in the workplace, in schools and so on. So we need to ensure that AI applications do not amplify it, that distance between uh, human agency and our uh, uh, our technologies which are essentially human artifacts so human agency should reign supreme well thank you very much sir yeah, my pleasure